by surprise. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I was sat here thinking we weren't going to score tonight. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my word. Yeah. Finished at the Valley tonight. Charlton Athletic 4, Exeter City 2. Not only have we won a game of football, but we've scored four goals. Three points, four goals. Cannot complain with that at all. I was not expecting that whatsoever before a ball was kicked, but I am in no position to complain after that. A fairly good performance from the boys against a very lively Exeter side. Definitely one of, I think, if not the best team we've played against so far this season. Very tough test, very lively game, very even, I guess you could say from the statistics. You probably could say the scoreline was a bit unfair for Exeter. But I'm in no position to complain. As I say, I think we played really well today. Obviously, a first win in nine, still unbeaten at home, which is incredible. Hopefully, we can now look to kick on and we can hope to keep up those performances because... I mean, if you look at the league table, we've completely shot up out of nowhere. You know, we were 18th, now we sit 11th, four points off the playoffs. Yes, obviously, games in hand still need to be taken into an account, but it doesn't look all so bad now. Obviously, that is a nothing comment because that is our first win in nine games in League One. You know, nine games without a win in all competitions, and we've grabbed a win today. Very impressive victory, I may say. Starting off, as ever, with the starting 11, we were unchanged from the game on Saturday against Lincoln, that very... Oh, so frustrating draw against Lincoln. Running through the lineup again. Joe Wallacott in goal. Back four. Mandela Regbo, Ryan Innes, Owen O'Connell and Stephen Sessignon. Midfield four. Jezerin Raksaki, Jules Dobson, Scott Fraser and Charlie Kirk. And the front two, of course, Jaden Stockley and Miles Lieburn. 4-4-2 four, four, again. No real complaints again about the starting eleven. Obviously, yes, it's unchanged from a very poor performance and a very underwhelming result against Lincoln. But I felt that the 4-4-2... Four, four, in, it's the formation that we've got to run. We've got to keep going with that, especially after tonight's performance. That performance was proof tonight that we need to keep that 4-4-2 because ultimately it's the system that's working at the moment. So yeah, no real complaints with the starting eleven there. Exeter were also unchanged from their victory over Barnsley. Of course, that was their first game without Matt Taylor as their manager. I, I can't remember the uh, Exeter's assistant manager who's taken on the role in a caretaker position, but they were also unchanged from that impressive win over Barnsley. Got some very good players in their books that have played really well so far. Giovanni Brown and Sam Noon being the main one. Obviously, Jay Stansfield as well. We knew that they were going to come to the Valley and present a test, you know, with the 3-5-2 or 5-3-2, whatever you want to call it, formation that they like to play. And we knew they were going to present us with a tough challenge. And that is certainly what they gave us. So heading into the game first half, we started really strong, really strong. In the first opening minutes, we got a couple of chances away. Raksaki with a good curling effort, three minutes in. Uh, done really well to cut inside and took a shot on the left foot, which looked like it was going in from um, from one angle because uh, the camera decided to zoom in on the shot. It, while, while the shot was taken on Charlton TV, it looked like it was going in, but it just missed. But yeah, it was a really strong start. You know, we were getting forward nicely, putting balls into the box. You know, there was one that came in on the right side, which the keeper managed to grab, which nearly got into the path of Stockley. One thing I will say about the opening minutes, you know, with the chances that we were creating, because like I said, it was a really strong opening minutes. Exeter looked really deadly on the counter-attack and there was one opportunity that they had. I think it was Caprice on the right-hand side. I think he interchanged on either side during the game and he seemed to have a lot of space and a lot of opportunities to cross the ball into the box. I felt he was one of their uh, more better performers, but he put in a ball uh, on the right-hand side after getting forward on a counter-attack and Jay Stansfield was there completely open uh, in the right-back position. Terrible positioning and defending, to be honest, but thankfully he misjudged his header and it went straight into the path of Vinicius, who was there to block it off. I don't know where Egbo was. Egbo was nowhere to be seen. Thankfully, we did take the lead and hit them with two very quick fire goals. The first one, of course, coming through Miles Lieburn, a very well taken goal from Lieburn. As Dobson gets the ball, plays in the ball into Lieburn. I don't know what Exeter's defence is doing. Their defence was caught in absolute no man's land. Lieburn, completely open, gets put through, goes past the defender, does really well, really composed to get past him, hits a shot. It does take a deflection off the Exeter player's shin, and I think Jamal Blackman you know, goes to save it, and I think it comes off his hand as well. But nevertheless, it flies into the corner. A really well-taken goal. Brilliant ball by Dobson, and a fantastic finish from Lieburn. His fourth in League One, fifth in all competitions. Cannot complain with that. He is... 
just the star man at the moment. He was absolutely brilliant tonight, absolutely influential. You know, just kept running, kept trying to bully Exodus' defence and put them under pressure. You know, he was winning everything in the air. He was a physical presence as well. I think their defence struggled to cope with him at times. And Lieburn got a very well-deserved goal. And then we did grab a second not long after that through Jaden Stockley's header, which, of course, was ruled as an own goal because it was an absolutely shocking header from Stockley, we have to say. Scott Fraser producing the ball. On the left-hand side, crosses it into the box. Stockley, he, he completely misses the header. He makes an absolute hash of it, dives in for it. I think it must have, I don't know if it hits the top of his head or the back of it. I have no idea. But nevertheless, he heads it. It comes off Hartridge, who is very unlucky from an Exeter perspective. And it does go into the back of the net. Stockley having the nerve to celebrate as well in front of his former side, which I felt hey, it's going gonna, it's gonna to upset a few people, isn't it? But yeah, uh, nevertheless... It's a great cross from, from Fraser, which I think is the only thing we can really talk about that goal. 2 new up, which was not what I expected at all, I have to say. 25 minutes in, you should have seen my shock when we were 2 new up. The first time we've scored more than two goals in a game since we played Plymouth, which is another Devon side, by the way. Of course, just before half-time, Exeter would get one back through Jay Stansfield, who I did highlight as one of their key players, with... A really good goal, we have to say, a really good goal. You know, Charlie Kirk clears the ball, probably should have done it a bit better, to be honest with you, if I'm being critical of Kirk. It comes out to, I think, one of their players before Giovanni Brown gets hold of the ball. I don't know if it came straight to Giovanni Brown, but Giovanni Brown touches it down really well. Stansfield just turns around and just sticks a right leg out and it just flies into the back of the net. Wallacott gets a hand to it, but he could do nothing to save that. Obviously, very disappointing to concede, but take nothing away from the finish. It's an absolutely fantastic goal from Stansfield. And we knew straight away from that point on, or I knew anyway, that Exeter were going to hit us, you know, they, especially in the second half, you know, going into the interval, 2-1 up they were definitely going to come out guns blazing and try and hit us because that is the side that they are. And they showed that in stages of the first half. You know, they looked very good on the counter-attack. And obviously, Noom, Brown and Stansfield and also Caprice, I felt, looked pretty good on the in the fullback positions. Collins was causing us problems in midfield as well. We were struggling at times to deal with their crosses. I remember one, they put one in uh, on the right-hand side and O'Connell literally just swung a leg at it and it comes off his shin, comes off one of their strikers. It was absolute pandemonium inside the box. You know, that, that ball literally could have gone anywhere if O'Connell would misjudge that any bit more but we have to say I think defensively to be honest with you I thought we did really well especially the likes of Stephen Sessignon and Mandela Egbo I think they did really well in the opening 60 minutes of the game you know Sessignon there was one I remember where Ex Exeter they, they, they were really good at playing the ball on the floor you know I felt that we again like the Lincoln game just like playing the ball long ball quite a lot of the time in the opening minutes of the first half we kind of cut that out as the second half progressed we started to play out along the floor as well maybe that is a bit of a I don't know maybe like a counter to Exeter's football but they were really good at it and I felt at times Innes and O'Connell were getting constantly caught out by those short balls in behind the defence but there was one where Sessignon got across really really well to deny a, a clear goal scoring opportunity you know he, the, the player gets a shot away but Sessignon done really well to get in front of it of course Steve Brown on Charlton TV thought not to speak about Sessignon's superb tackle but more so the great move Exeter which is standard Steve Brown because he seems to be anti-Charlton whenever he commentates us so it seems to favour the opposing team but anyway enough of that um, but yeah I felt defensively we did really well to cope with them despite the threatening opportunities that they had like I said I think O'Connell and Innes could have done a little bit better in terms of dealing with the in-behind runs. But to be fair, I felt both of them had pretty good games. For the most part, I think we coped very well despite Exeter's uh, pressure. But we also looked good as well going forward as well. You know, Mandela Egbo, again, I felt I've been really impressed with him since he's come back from injury. You know, he drives forward really well. He's very good defensively, but he likes to drive forward, which is very similar to what Sean Clare is as well. Clare also did come on for Stephen Sessignon, which I was a little bit disappointed with because I felt Sessignon had... Well, I say to say had a fairly decent game. To be fair, I think the left hand side in general was left fairly quiet. Again, similar to the Lincoln game, you know, Sessignon and Kirk got nowhere near as much action as Egbo and Raksaki did. And then Lieburn come off as well, who did a very good job again tonight. I thought it was absolutely superb, but he was struggling with his left knee, which hopefully is nothing too serious. He was uh, limping off as he came off, so hopefully that is, fingers crossed, nothing too serious. And Albie Morgan came on, which I felt was quite a surprising substitution to start with, but I was even more surprised for the fact that he was put in the advanced role that he was. He was played almost as like a, it's almost like a striker. We had 15 shots, six on target. Exeter had 12 shots, four on target. So it was a game with plenty of shots, you know, very lively, very entertaining, very back and forth teams. Both sides constantly going at each other, trying to create attacks. And, 
you know, we looked a lot better, to be honest, in the Lincoln game going forward. And But then again, Exeter also looked very good, especially on the counter-attack. But like I say, defensively, I think we coped fairly well. I think especially Scott Fraser and Jules Dobson in the midfield. You know, even though Exeter play with a midfield three, and we obviously have two in the centre anyway with Dobson and Fraser, it was always going to be a tough battle. But I felt both of them had really good games defensively. Dobson got caught out again in possession a couple of times, like the Lincoln game, but I think overall put in a very good performance. And you could see his camaraderie, almost like a captain leader on that pitch and Fraser defensively I felt was outstanding you know he was absolutely brilliant and his footwork again was superb but Exeter were threatening going forward you could definitely see that there was one opportunity I think it was Caprice actually who I've spoken about a fair few times in this video who struck an absolute weldy in the 74th minute absolutely hit a cannon off the crossbar an outstanding strike caught it really really well and I'm surprised the crossbar didn't split in two by, by the power of the strike I, I hate it when we have a one goal lead and the other side is just constantly attacking us and especially when they're good at it like a side like Exeter so we definitely needed the fresh pair of legs and Garner of course acted on that the two wingers Kirk and Raksaki come off replaced by Corey Blackett Taylor and Jack Payne Kirk as I just mentioned uh, did not get anywhere near enough of the ball as I thought he would uh, we didn't really use the left hand side as much as the right hand side Raksaki again had a fairly good game I think caused Exeter problems like to cut inside and you know cause him a bit of issues like standard Raksaki really was a bit I didn't know what to think with Blackett Taylor coming on after a, a, such a poor display against Lincoln, but I was definitely proven wrong by him tonight. My word, he put in a, a much better cameo, to be fair. And also Jack Payne did very, very well. And of course, Chuck Sanike making his return to the starting eleven, replacing Jaden Stockley. Stockley, yeah, had a fairly decent game again, much better than what, we're, what we've seen from him this season. I said it against Lincoln, you know, 4-4-2. We've definitely got the best out of him now, or much better, should I say, uh, out of him with a striker next to him. And I think that hopefully with this system, if we do carry that on, uh, we'll see a lot more out of him. We'll see a couple more goals. But was really happy to see Chucks and EK back. You know, he's had a, a torrid time since returning to the club, really. You know, he's been had ravaged of injuries. It's his first time back at the club now. And of course, in typical Chuck's fashion, he goes and grabs the goal that effectively seals the win for us. You know, a very scrappy goal, but I couldn't care less. Blackett Taylor over on the right-hand side. Like I said, he had a very good cameo tonight compared to the Lincoln game. Plays in Dobson. Dobson takes a touch, shapes away from the defender, has a shot on the left foot, definitely scuffs it. But then, unfortunately for the Exeter defender it comes off of him he kind of plays it into the path of an EK and EK just swings his left foot at it and it comes off the outside of Jamal Blackman's leg hits the post and crosses the line Jack Payne smashing the ball into the back of the net while it was halfway over the line at this point just to make sure that it went in the back of the net but an EK will claim that and I couldn't be happier for him you know I always felt that you know he is a striker or a player should I say that we have badly missed you know our striking options being as limited as they are really after the transfer window and with an EK being injured, we desperately needed him to come back. I would go as far as saying one of the best strikers on his day when he is fit. He's one of the best impact players we've had in recent years. The guy just comes on and he makes an impact. As soon as he come off the bench, I knew straight away, I, I, in my head, I was like, he's going to score, 100%. He's going to score. And literally, probably a minute and a half after coming on, gets himself a goal. Really, really happy for him. And he, he barely needed that. He absolutely needed that. And of course, that wasn't the final goal we scored. We grabbed another one in stoppage time through Jack Payne, the five foot three wizard, scoring a header of, of all things. Absolutely brilliant. Blackett Taylor again coming over on the left hand side. Crosses a ball into the box after doing really well to shape past the defender. Crosses a ball in the box and Payne rises to beat the defender with an absolute bullet header, a fantastic header from Payne to make it 4 1. Definitely was not expecting that. Definitely was not expecting that before the ball was kicked. But, of course, that wasn't the final bit of action that happened at the end of the game. Obviously, Exeter did get one back through a controversial penalty, dare I say it. I think it was merely just, to be honest with you, I think it was just coming together between the two players. And an EK was stronger, to be honest with you. I, I think you can, you can see it again, you know, the linesman flags for a foul that an EK did commit. I will say that was a foul in the build-up. And Sean Clare just lets the player breeze past him. He just effectively gave up at that point and an EK just comes across him. You know, I can see why the ref gave it. You know, he sticks a leg out, he comes across him, but I think merely it was just to come in together and an EK was stronger. And the ref gives a penalty. Sam Noom steps up, puts it away. Owen O'Connell then receives a yellow card for booting the ball away, which is just stupid, to be honest with you. And I, I didn't really care at that point. I didn't really care because the win was secured and firmly in our grasp at that point. And yeah, 
That is the full-time whistle, Charlton Athletic 4, Exeter City 2. Can we play Devon every single week? Seriously. I did say it in the intro, probably an unfair scoreline. Um, they're not an accurate representation of how Exeter played. I felt, to be honest with you, they were the best side we played this season. You can see they are where they are in the league for a reason. You know, they have played really well so far this season. And again, they showed that at the Valley tonight. You know, their attacking play is very good and it is a threat. So I will say well played to them and I wish them all the best uh, for the rest of the season because like I say, they gave us a fair good test tonight. But for Charlton's perspective, from what was a very even, very lively and entertaining affair, we've got to take that. You know, four goals, three points. You cannot complain with that whatsoever. A, a fairly good performance as well. A very good performance. Eburn was brilliant. Fraser and Dobson were brilliant in the middle of the park. Eggbo impressed again. Uh, and EK getting a goal as well was brilliant. Blackett Taylor much better off the bench. Same with Jack Payne as well. Also another good cameo from him individually and also a team performance. A very good display. And yeah, hopefully we can, fingers crossed, keep that going. Because after all, if I'm putting a negative spin on it, it is just one win. You know, we've gone eight games without a win. We've been playing some really poor football. You know, the results we've been putting in, it's been the same old story with all of our games. And you guys know how frustrated I've been getting with that so tonight was a sigh of relief really that we've put in a fairly good performance against a very strong side so hopefully that is us kicking on now and we can put on those performances i mean if you look at the league table it doesn't look so bad now you know we've jumped from 18th to 11th four points off the top six yes obviously game in hands uh need to come into play and i'm trust me i'm not getting ahead of myself here you know i'm not all of a sudden going to say oh my god we're going to get top six now because it is only one game it is only one victory so hopefully we can kick on now. Portsmouth on Monday night, not going to be an easy game. They're one of the best teams in this league so far this season. But our record against them is fairly positive. So hopefully we can keep that going on Sky Sports. It is bollocks, really, that it is on a Monday night. Uh, that's why I wasn't at the game today uh, due to uni commitments, which obviously is a shame. And I won't be going Monday night either, which is obviously disappointing. And I would love to be there, but sadly I can't. Um, speaking of attendance, while we're on the... Uh, while we're on that topic, the attendance tonight, uh, pff, it definitely, again, was a lie. I don't know what's going on with the attendance figures, but the attendance was announced, I think, at 11,400 or just over that, which is a, a complete lie, to be honest with you. That is it for this match reaction, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, and turn on those post notifications. What? Those post notifications. So you are notified of every time I upload a new video. What do you guys think of the game? Let me know in the comments below. A lot more positive. Thank God. I'm sick and tired of screaming and shouting at the camera every single week about how negative we are. So it is really nice to speak about a victory and a good performance. And obviously four goals, which I can't complain about. This has been Tyler Rowlinson. Have a nice day. And I'll see you all for that match reaction at home against Portsmouth. Take it easy. Stay safe. And I'll see you all then. Bye.